Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary and today's video is going to be a reading vlog. So the plan for this vlog is to read a couple of things that are, I think, classified as dark academia, mostly because two of them were just on my TBR and then another one is a book that I've been eyeing for a while. So without further ado, I'm gonna run you through the books that I'm planning on reading. Um, and then I have started two of them, so I will let you know how those are going. So for this vlog, I'm planning on reading Babel by R.F. Kuang. I'm also hoping to read For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. Is that who wrote that book? And then I'm thinking I'm going to read Ace of Spades as well. I don't remember the author's name off the top of my head, but I'll pop, pop a picture of it right here. These are all three books that I think are considered dark academia. And I have never really read dark academia before. I did read The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. And I didn't like it very much. I also, which, but that book I've heard is set at a college and has like, it's a mystery thriller, but it's not actually dark academia. I also read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. Same thing, set at a college, um, a little more towards the like classic or what I think of as like classic dark academia plot lines where there's a group of students and in the past timeline, one of them has gone, gotten murdered and you know that that happened already, but you're like trying to figure out who it is. I also have read Ninth House, which I don't think is technically dark academia either, but I really loved the vibe of Ninth House. Of those books, Ninth House is my favorite one, um, and then The Maidens is my least favorite one because I did not like it at all, really, basically. Uh, but I have started Babel. I'm not very far into it. I'm less than 100 pages in. Um, I have it physically because I bought it earlier this year, and I wanted to read it. But Babel is, it's like historical fantasy, dark academia. So um, it might not actually even be Dark Academia. I just saw it on a list of Dark Academia books along with the other books that I'm planning on reading for this vlog. And I thought, what? That's perfect. They're all on my TBR. So Babel follows this character, Robin, who is Chinese and he gets taken out of China and brought to London at first. And then eventually the plan is that he will go to Oxford and train in the, um, the translations department of Oxford. Uh, because there's this magic called silverwork where you are basically able to like speak words into silver and then the silver gets powers, if that makes sense. Um, but the reason they want him is because he speaks Mandarin and Cantonese already and you have a better chance of being able to have more power with the silver if you can speak a language fluently is my understanding of it. Again, I'm not very far into it. None of that has been explained in the book so far. That's just my understanding of how the magic system works based on other reviews and also based on the Goodreads description. Hope that makes sense. But where I'm at, Robin is about to go to Oxford, but he has not quite yet made it there. So um, I will hopefully read more of that at some point and give you updates on it. The other book that I've already started is For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing. This one I'm about 16% of the way in. I have an audiobook. I listened to it this morning on the way to court, but this one follows a teacher. I believe his name is Teddy. Now that I'm thinking about it, I can't remember, but he teaches at a private school, like a prep school, and he just won teacher of the year, um, and he's real weird. Like, you know immediately that he's really weird. I kind of don't want to tell you what he's doing because I feel like if I didn't know, it would be like an interesting twist to find out, but essentially, I think he's murdering his students. Um, and other people he comes into contact with, he's making them very sick and making it look like they are just naturally sick or that they've committed suicide. And I know there's a plot line in this where his wife either is missing or is dead or something um, because the like Goodreads description kind of gives it away, but it says something like, um, he loves his wife, but no one's seen her for a while. I think her name's Allison. And in the book where I am, I haven't met her yet. So I don't know if she's like dead. I really don't know what's going on with that. Um, but so far I'm liking that one. I will say it's like very apparent that Teddy's not a good guy, which not that it shouldn't be, but like I was kind of hopeful that maybe there would be some kind of like, is he a bad guy or is he not a bad guy? Uh, but no, he's just a bad guy. Um, and then the last book that I haven't started yet is called Ace of Spades. And hopefully I will be able to give you a better synopsis once I read it. But that book essentially, I believe, follows two black students that are like um, either top of their class or like somehow very prestigious at their school. But they go to a private school and there's not a lot of black students. And they start getting letters or texts or something hinting to secrets. Think Pretty Little Liars because that's what I think. But... 
I don't know if it's necessarily exactly like that. Um, and I don't know what kind of secrets or whatever they have. And again, I have not started that book yet, but I am planning on reading that for this vlog as well. Um, that is the one book um, for this vlog that is not on my November TBR, but I'm hopeful that I can get to everything on my November TBR without any real like issues. Those are the books that I'm gonna be reading in this vlog. Follow along if you would like to see my thoughts on those books. And I will give you an update when I have one. Hello, so exciting news. I did finish For Your Own Good today. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really like it. So I'm giving it two and a half stars, rounding it up to three. Cause for the most part, it's fine. I just got really annoyed with it. Like it, it just gets a little repetitive for me. And I think part of the problem is that you know the whole time what's going on. And so there's no real like mystery. There's no real suspense. Um, there's no like oomph behind any of what's happening. And I also like, I feel like with a book like this, what would give it that suspense is if you think that there's a likelihood that the character, cause you're following the bad guy, right? Um, so we're following this teacher who is like murdering people. So I think that if there had been a higher likelihood that he was gonna get caught, then there would be more suspense and more excitement for me for this book. But as it was, it was fine. I am pretty disappointed because I've heard such good things about this. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that. I have a couple packages that I'm gonna open. One is a book and another is my Sephora order. So I'll probably film that and show it to you, but I have to go get those, they're downstairs. Matt is also downstairs. So I'm gonna see if I can film while he's right there um, without getting too embarrassed. But yeah, I did finish For Your Own Good. I ended up giving it three stars. Also, you can see me in the mirror right there. This is our closet door, which is just a sliding mirror. Um, and this is my closet. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I will let you know when I've started Ace of Spades. It might be a while because I have another audio book that I'm listening to right now that's not for this vlog. Um, and then I am reading Babel physically. Still, I've gotten no farther than that, but maybe I will tonight or tomorrow. So that is my update for right now. So this is a package from Pingo Books. I've already marked out my address. Um, and let's see what it is. I already know what it is, but it'll be a surprise for you. It is Everything I Learned, I Learned in a Chinese Restaurant by Curtis Chin. I got this from Pingo because there's a waitlist already in my library and this is on my TBR for November. Came out in October, so somebody already read it and sold it back on Pingo. So I got this for, it doesn't say, but it retails, as you can see, for like 30 bucks. I think I got it for like 10. So very pleased with that. Um, I will read this and then maybe I will also sell it on Pango, but maybe I'll keep it, who knows? Um, and then this is my Sephora order uh, from the Sephora sale. So I'm gonna open that up as well and show you what I have. Okay, so let's see what's in here. We have Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. I have not tried this mascara before, but it was on sale. So there's two for 35 and I think they're normally like 20 bucks each. And I got 20% off, I think, because it was VIB sale. So that is why I got this. There's also this Patrick Top blush, which I'm really excited about. Let me show you what color I got. So as you can see, it's just like bright raspberry pink and it's a powder and a gel um, or a cream, I think. So I'm really, really excited to see what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and try to swatch it. Also that pen is what I use to open this box. That's why it's right here. So, ooh, it's very smooth powder. That's what it looks like. So I'm excited about that. I think that'll be really pretty. The other thing they have in here, as always, are samples. So this is a lactic acid serum, apparently. Okay. Oh, this is a perfume sample. Um, for Gio by Giorgio Armani. Ooh, smells very cologne -y, very strong. Um, we also have this Hourglass Mini. I believe this is a brow pencil. Ooh, yeah. So I'll test this out and let you know how it goes. I'm really excited to use this because um, I had the NYX brow pencil forever and it like completely broke off the last time I tried to sharpen it. So I've just been doing powder brows, which don't look the best in my opinion. Um, I also have another Ease Drops. Um, this is the foundation that I pretty much always wear. It's like my favorite foundation and I bought it because it was on sale and I'm almost out of the one that I have. 
I got this Gimme Brow by Benefit. This is a mini of the brow uh, gel that they have. And I believe this is tinted. Yeah, it's a dark brown. I've never used Benefit's tinted brow gel, so I'm excited for that. And I think that's everything. I'm about to go to the Mizzou Tennessee game with my firm and I have a hat and one of my coworkers who went to KU and doesn't like Mizzou either uh, wanted a hat as well. So I have this other hat. My dad brought them in because he grew up in Tennessee. So he's been a Tennessee fan his whole life. Uh, so pretty fun. Hello. It has been, I think, weeks since I've updated this vlog, but I did want to do an update now because I am 50% of the way through both Ace of Spades and Babel by R.F. Kuang. And I have some thoughts. Uh, my thoughts on Ace of Spades first, I guess. I'm listening to it as an audiobook. And it's nice. It has two narrators. So there's one for the male character and one for the female character. Ace of Spades is about this, like, prestigious private school. And there are two black students at the school. One is Chiamaka Obade Obadayo. I don't remember her last name off the top of my head. And again, I'm listening to it as an audiobook, so they just say it sporadically. But <sighs> there's Chimaka and then um, Devon, I think is the other character's name. I'm going to be so embarrassed if that's wrong. But I think those are the two characters. Um, essentially, the premise is Devon is poor. He's a scholarship student at the school. And his only real friend at the school is this kid, Jack, who is another scholarship student who he knew from his like previous school from his like poor neighborhood. Um, and then Chimaka is a popular, wealthy, um, half white, half black student at the school. And her dad is Italian, her mom is Nigerian. And so she's got some difficulties because her parents are immigrants, but um, she's like, they're both doctors. She's wealthy enough to get into the school. So that isn't really her struggle. And she has this best friend, Jamie, who is like a legacy student at the school. And she has like kind of a crush on Jamie, but she's not sure if he will like her back. Um, there's also some hints that she and Jamie have gotten into some like shenanigans in the past and like gotten into trouble. I don't know how much of a spoiler it is. I can't remember when in the book it started like talking about explicitly what it was. So I'm not gonna tell you here, but at the beginning of the book, they start getting these like gossip girl, A from Pretty Little Liars style messages where basically their secrets are being exposed. So Devon, is it Devon or Darius? Either way, <laughs> he is um, gay. And so he's being, he's been outed by aces. That's like the first message. And then the second one is Chiamaka gets framed for stealing candy. And it's unclear to me if she actually stole the candy or not, because the other things that aces has like talked about are things that were actually done. So I'm really not sure. I don't think she did steal the candy, but I really, I don't know. So, um, yeah, they eventually start working together to try to figure out who the Ace of Spades is and where I'm at. They've, I'm pretty sure. So I have guesses on who it is. Um, and then they just had a reveal that I was like, pretty sure was going to be the reveal. Um, but again, I'm only halfway through, so we don't know any names yet. Um, but I have some suspicions on who it's going to be. Um, I like it, I guess, but I just, I genuinely like I don't know if it's like the YA thing isn't really hitting for me or what. I don't know if this is really dark academia. I honestly don't know if any of the books that I'm reading in this vlog are what I'm looking for with dark academia. And I don't think I've read. Hello, Murph. Murphy came in to join me. He's gonna lay down. I don't know if I've read any book ever that like actually is what I want dark academia to be. Or maybe the vibes just don't hit for me. I'm really not sure, but it's fine. It's feeling like a three star read. Um, I know this book got a lot of hype when it got published, I think 2020 or 2021, but for me, it's just fine. Like there's nothing super special about it. I'm wondering if I'd read it when it first came out, if I would have gotten swept up in the hype and liked it a lot more. I don't know, but again, it's fine. I am going to continue in it because I'm not like disliking my read at all. And I want to know what happens. Sorry if you can hear music. Matt is playing music downstairs. He got a switch today. So he's playing a Pokemon game on his switch and listening to a record. The other book that I'm reading is Babel and I'm finally 50% of the way in Babel. I've been reading this like all month and it's taken me this long to like finally sit down and actually read it. I'm gonna close the door, hold on. But I'm really enjoying Babel. So the premise of Babel 
is we've got this character, Robin Swift, who was born in Canton in China, and he grew up speaking Cantonese and Mandarin with his, like, family. And then I think when he's, like, 12, he gets whisked away to England um, from an, not an anonymous patron, from a patron who is this professor level at Babel, which is the language institute at Oxford. So basically he's being trained up to be a translator. And the reason they needed him to translate and to like join this class of translators is because the magic system in this world revolves around silver working. And basically you write two words on either side of a bar of silver, two words that come from the same root and mean similar things, but not the exact same thing. And then the magic is in the difference between the words. So you have to have someone who can say both words and they make a big deal about how like to do this, you can't just say both words. You have to be like relatively fluent, completely fluent actually in both languages. So you have to like really understand. They make a big deal about like whether you can dream in this other language and you think in this other language. Like if you're really fully immersed in this other language. When Robin is at Oxford, he finds out about this like secret gang that's basically trying to topple what Babel stands for. Um, and he is like struggling throughout the book, whether he is on the right or wrong side of history with his choice to either be an interpreter or not an interpreter, a, um, a translator with Oxford, or if he wants to join this like rebel group, if you will. Um, I'm liking it. I have heard people say that this is really heavy handed with its discussion of colonialism being bad and all that. But for me, it's actually not as heavy handed as I was worried it would be based on what other people said about it. And again, I'm only halfway through. Um, I am finding myself skipping some of the footnotes because some of them reference things that don't really matter to me. Um, like, I think it's cool that RF Kuang did the research to put them in. Um, but I also like, I could take or leave them, frankly, a lot of the time. Some of them are helpful with like background information on characters and things, but a lot of them they'll like reference a book and then she'll do like a summary of what the book is about and I don't need to know. Like you could have left it out. I didn't need to know that. I don't need to know. It feels a little pretentious, which I don't think is like the worst thing in the world, but it is like, I don't know. It's something that I wanted to know, I guess. Um, so this one's feeling like a strong four star. Depending on how it ends, like it could boost up to a five in the second half. I don't know, but um, that's the way I'm feeling. Should I hold up the book cover? Is this what you guys want? This is the dust jacket. The actual book is downstairs, but I finally made it halfway through yesterday. And so I'm um, hopefully going to read more of that tonight. I will say it's Monday and I've been posting on Mondays, but I filmed the whole video. I just forgot to edit it and upload it. So that's what I'm going to do now. And then I will probably read more of Babel while it's like uploading and stuff. Um, and I'll let you know when I have another update, hopefully soon. Hello, I just got home from work for the day. Um, so it's like starting to get dark outside, which is what you're seeing. The dogs just came in from outside. So, so they're running around like crazy, but I did finish Ace of Spades today and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it was fine. Like <laughs> I gave it three stars, it was okay. I've seen some rave reviews of this book. I also went through Goodreads and looked at some like not so good reviews. Um, that's what I do when I like don't know what I don't like about something. Um, or like what isn't working. I like to see what other people say, if that makes sense. And it helps me form like my feeling into words of how I actually feel about something. So um, I will try to remember to link the review that I saw. It does spoil some things. So if you haven't read this book yet, probably don't read it. Um, it's only like vague spoilers because it doesn't actually spoil anything, but it, I think it kind of spoils several things. Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> but this book is compared to what is it? It's compared to Gossip Girl and it's compared to Get Out. And I think Get Out is a little more applicable just because of the like themes and underlying things that happen in this book. As I mentioned, it's about these two black students at a school. I did confirm his name is Devin or Devon. Devon. And her name is Chimaka. So I don't know why her name was so much easier for me to remember than his, but um, I couldn't remember like Oh, I thought, I think I said Darius last time. And it's because I'm also reading Black Dagger Brotherhood right now. So I got a little confused um, between the characters. There's a character in that book called Darius. Uh, anyways, so it's Devon and Chimaka. And again, it's compared to Get Out and Gossip Girl. And I think <sighs> Gossip Girl is because of the like anonymous messages where like someone is sending it to the whole school saying like the secrets of Devon and Chimaka. Um, there's a couple of really big like problems in this book for me. I'm going to try to sort of go down through them quickly. Um, first is not dark academia. Okay. You can't just set a book at a school and call it dark academia. 
school setting does not equal dark academia, even if it's a thriller. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, um, whoever is marketing these books is dark academia when they're not. But for me, dark academia has to like involve the academics. That has to be like a central theme. In this book, the school is a central theme only because it's the location though. Like it's happening at this like private elite prep school where they only have let in two black students in the past 10 years, which is a whole thing. But that doesn't make it dark academia. Like it's not, the academics aren't really mentioned. Like they talk about how Devon is really into music. They talk about how Chimaka is really into science, but like that doesn't play a role in what is happening to them. So I don't think dark academia is the correct placement for this at all. It's just a general YA like thriller. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is all of the things that I suspected, like all of the characters that I suspected were involved in this plot, were involved in the plot. So uh, yeah, so it's kind of predictable in that way. Like I thought it was pretty obvious what was happening as things started getting like revealed as new characters got introduced. I was like, okay, well, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, they're a part of it. Um, so it's a little obvious in that aspect. I saw some people saying like the twists threw them. The twists did not throw me at all. Um, and again, maybe it's just that I like, I don't want to be like, I'm too good at looking at twists, but like, I do tend to figure things out. So that's not like the most shocking thing in the world, but it was like, I wanted to be a little surprised. Like I wanted something to be like, at least a little like out there, but there just really isn't in this book. Um, another problem is that like, none of the side characters really have their own lives or stories. Even the family members of the main characters, for me, they just like, it's like they don't exist. And then either Chiyomaka or Devon approaches them and suddenly they're a character like does that make sense like they're just not fleshed out they don't feel real none of it feels real um so that was another problem that I had with this book this is not like a really negative review but honestly like I enjoyed the writing style I enjoyed I enjoyed certain parts of the concept I just feel like overall it just wasn't executed the best way for me personally so like certain things didn't make sense and I feel like a lot of that would have been solved if this had been at a boarding school that was like kind of removed from society. Like one of those boarding schools that's like off in the countryside in New England. If you read My Dark Vanessa or um, what is that book that I read? Oh gosh, it was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Award this year. What is it called? I'm not even gonna be able to think of it. That's so annoying. Um, I own it, it's upstairs, it doesn't matter. But like both of those were set at boarding schools that were like in this town and the whole town sort of revolves around the boarding school. Um, and then the students aren't from the town. So that would have made more sense to me if that's if that had been the setting. Like all of the things that happened would have made more sense. The other thing that doesn't make a lot of sense is that this book is supposed to be set present day, but social media doesn't really become a thing until like the very, very end of the book. And I think if this were real social, if this had really happened like today, or even when this book was released 2020, social media would have been a big part of the story, right? Like social media is a big part of our lives and has been for like 10 years. So I think that should have been acknowledged more. Um, or they could have said it before social media was really a big thing, like in the mid 2000s, where we had the internet and stuff, but we didn't have social media. We had like flip phones, but we didn't have Instagram. You know what I mean? So I think that would have been better. That would have been better suited to this book. Um, I know that like MySpace existed, but not a lot of like, not everyone was on, like everyone was on MySpace, but not everyone was on MySpace. You know what I mean? And even without that, I think it would have made more sense if like they were at this boarding school and the boarding school somehow had all of those sites blocked. Cause then, I mean, cell phones still, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that would have worked better. So anyways, that's my full review of this book. I thought it was fine, but like, I probably won't think about it again. It was very run of the mill for me. So three stars, um, a pretty low three star, but three stars nonetheless, cause I don't think it was a bad book. I just didn't like it that much. Like I didn't, I didn't dislike it, but I also didn't like, love it. You know, it was fine. That's my feeling on that book. Um, I am still halfway through Babel, so I need to get to reading on that. I think that's what I'm going to do now. Um, because I only have, I mean, I'm halfway through, but I'm hoping that I can get this vlog up on Thursday because I don't have another video to go up that day and I really don't want to miss another upload. So, um, I might quickly film something that could go up on Thursday. Um, and then just upload it at a different time if need be. Um, but I do want to get to Babel and I think I can do it. I really think I can finish it and then finally wrap up this vlog. So, uh, stay tuned for the vlog. You'll know when you see this, when it goes up, but, um, yeah, I'm going to go read Babel now. Hello. So it is now Tuesday and I have finished 
Babel by RF Kwong, which I am giving four and a half stars. I'm rounding it down on Goodreads. I really enjoyed this book, okay? So this is another book that's touted as Dark Academia, which I'm gonna get into in a second what I think Dark Academia actually means. Well, I'll have more thoughts on that in just a second, but um, this book was really good. I think I've mentioned what it's about a couple of times, so I'm not gonna like recap the whole synopsis again, but basically we're following Robin <laughs> in his like uh, journey through the Institute at uh, Babel, the Institute of Translation. I almost said the Institute of Technology, but that's not it. Um, and his like found, there's found family aspects to this book um, with his cohort, which are the three other students. So there's two girls, Letty and Victoire. Um, Letty is white and she's the daughter of an admiral in England. And Victoire is black. She's originally, I believe, from Haiti, but she grew up in Paris. Um, and she and her mother were slaves to this like wealthy family in Paris until slavery was abolished. And then she ended up coming to Oxford. Who else? Oh, Rami. I can't remember his full name now off the top of my head, but he is um, from Calcutta, I believe. Um, and so all of them are chosen for their different like language abilities. And they all are very like proficient in Greek and Latin, I think. And then they have different specialties within Babel. And as the book goes on, you start to learn that Babel used to mainly focus on like romantic languages. So um, languages like French, Italian, and then Germanic languages, like European languages, basically. Now they are realizing that there are so many differences between like Chinese, Japanese, Sanskrit, Arabic, all of these other languages that are really not tapped into. And there are so many more magic pairs to be found. And I think I've explained this, but the magic system basically works because you can say one word and then say the other word that means like a similar thing, like how you would translate it, but the magic is in the difference. That was my favorite part about this book though. I really loved the magic system. If you've been here before, you know that one of my like things that piques my interest is hearing magic systems that have to do with like words. Um, there's another series that I never ended up finishing, but I want to at some point, The Scholomance. The first book was A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, and I really liked in that book how the magic revolved around words. I really, really enjoyed this book. I'm really glad I read it, finally. It did take me over a month to read, which I kind of suspected that it would, uh, given my like inability these days to read physically, but I'm glad I read it. I read this in the year, within the year that I bought it in. Cons, like the reason this did book didn't get five stars. One is I felt like we needed more time. There, the characters, especially like Robin, the main character, goes through a lot of changes over the course of this book. And I feel like he needed more time, either more pages or like a duology or a tr trilogy or something to give him the time to do like the growth and change that he went through. It almost felt a little rushed. And also given that this book spans like 10 years of this guy's life, in 550 pages it honestly could have been longer because the, it just felt like there were like long gaps of her just being like and during this whole school year this is what happened like one paragraph and I would have liked a little more like depth for those things additionally there's some parts like towards the end of the book um or towards like the second half of the book where you learn more about like the secret society that is trying to take Oxford down and um, it's called Hermes. I think that's in the whatever. But you learn about it very early on, but you learn a lot more about it towards the middle to end. And it kind of felt like you start getting to know these characters. And then as soon as you get interested in characters, they're just not in the story anymore um, for various reasons. And I'm not gonna spoil obviously what happens, but like there were, several characters that like you don't really get to know much about them until you do and then as soon as it feels like as soon as you start like getting familiar with these characters they just leave the page and I just wish that they had been around for longer because I feel like different things I don't know I felt like this book could have made a bigger impact on me um had other things happened I will say I loved the last lines I was hit or miss on certain things that happened at the end but I did like really feel like it was the, it was a necessary ending, I guess. But again, I think I would have been more like emotionally invested. I had the, the, um, the characters that are around for the end of the book been either around for longer or had there been more like 
more of an attempt to draw the reader into them and to make them close to the reader. But I felt like pretty much by the end of the book, we're left with like characters that have sort of just become known to the reader or like that weren't big throughout, if that makes sense. Like I feel like R.F. Kong did a lot of character work laying the groundwork for certain things that happened. And then there's a thing that happens. And after that point, it's kind of like, okay, well now there, she like, it felt like she was scrambling to try to get you connected to these other characters. And I just don't think it worked. I'm trying to be vague because again, I'm not, trying not to spoil it, but maybe you know what I'm talking about if you've read this book. Um, but yes, I finished Babel. I definitely really want to read The Poppy War now. So now I finished three Dark Academia books, Dark Academia adjacent books, I guess. Um, I think I want to read A Secret History by Donna Tartt and I also want to read If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. And I don't know which other book is like touted as Dark Academia, but like I want to look up like the original Dark Academia books because all of these came out more recently. And I don't know if any of them are actually Dark Academia. So if you have read a lot of Dark Academia and you have read any of these books, let me know if you agree or disagree with me that they should be considered Dark Academia. For me, of the three books that I read, this came the closest to feeling Dark Academia, but also this still felt a little bit like the school was just the setting and it didn't really feel... It felt... I don't know how to explain it because it definitely was like a big part of the plot. Like... Maybe it's that it wasn't the typical trope of like this small cohort and then one of the students dies. Cause I think that's what happens in both If We Were Villains and The Secret History, which again, I haven't read. So I don't know why I'm so like tied and married to that idea for Dark Academia, but I really am, I guess. So all of that to say, I think I need to do a part two to this Dark Academia style reading vlog where I read the original Dark Academia books and just see what I think. Cause maybe it's just not a genre for me. Like maybe it's just not something that I'm ever gonna love. I don't know. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it to this point, hmm, what emoji should you leave? You leave a knife emoji in the comments down below for none of them really. None of them have knives, but you know, just because murder. Um, and let me know in, also in the comments if you've read any of these books and how you felt about them. Let me know what your like favorite Dark Academia read is or if you even like Dark Academia books because now I'm wondering if like maybe it's just not for me. Uh, but that's it for me. I do try to post two videos every single week so I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!